Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world after taking our first step toward real steel. And right over here, we're going to get right into it. Because we have an experiment to perform, and it looks like all of our furnaces have stopped smoking, so that means they should all be done here. So we are going through and we are tabulating how many firings and how many units of each type of fuel we have. We have charcoal over there, black coal here, and anthracite over here. So we're going to see, starting with the charcoal, because I know it has the shortest burn time listed for it, we are at 19% completion. The black coal we have at 19% completion. Oh, okay. Well, please don't tell me. Oh, no. Oh, 19. Oh, man. Okay, well, let's take a look at this fuel and determine how to move forward from here, because that's kind of disappointing. I was really hoping we'd have something more interesting and useful. So we have here, down in my inventory, we have charcoal, we have anthracite, and we have black coal. I'm going to swap these around, actually. So charcoal has a burn duration of 40 seconds per unit. Black coal has 84 seconds, and anthracite is all the way up at 196 seconds. So I was under the impression that when burning them in stacks, we'd actually get more burn time out of them. But it appears that is not the case. It seems like a stack of charcoal, black coal, and anthracite each have the exact same burn time. And that's really disappointing because anthracite is, at least in my experience, quite rare. I've only found one vein of it, and honestly, this is the most anthracite I've ever had in any Vintage Story game, whether single player or on a server. So I think going forward, I think we might need to call off the experiment and just leave the anthracite and black coal here, and we will just fire with the charcoal that we have, which is quickly dwindling. Sorry about that. If I'd done that beforehand, I wouldn't have started that experiment, but you live and you learn. So let's go ahead and we will load these back up and we will start firing them a second time. And I can tell you pretty much how much this is going to take here. Because I've fired enough of these in my lifetime. Also, math tells us that if we're at just shy of 20%, for firing, then it's going to take five firings each, which means each of these will take two and a half stacks of charcoal plus a couple pieces because of that minor loss. Since we're not at 20%, we're at 19%. So let's go ahead and light these up. And what I'll do is I'm just going to come in here at some point and chuck an extra couple pieces on top of each pile once this burns down a bit, just once. Just gets over the extra percent deficit you end up with if you just fire these straight. So there's that. Now, how about this beautiful building we have here? I'm really liking these dirt walls. I think the low wall is really nice. And you know what? We're going to keep it. I think we'll just leave it like it is. It's beautiful. OK, no, no. You got me. You got me. I'm lying. We have a building to build around these. And I think it is high time we get to it. So I'm going to take some quick measurements. And I'm going to come back with some materials and show you what I've been thinking about as far as design goes. Okay, so I've put this block palette together in a creative world, just to sort of experiment with it. And I think I've liked what I came up with. So what I want to do is I want to start with some bauxite stairs around the base, and then we will have some fire clay brick walls. I figured these would match pretty well with the bricks in the cementation furnaces. And then on the corners and at other locations, we could have the finite stone bricks as sort of a bracing. And then maybe like some kind of support outside the walls in basalt dry stone fence. Now, this is going to take a lot of fire clay bricks, but luckily I had been stockpiling them for a while in anticipation of working a lot more iron blooms. And we are sitting on over 500 bricks right now, and I have some more, I think, just finished firing. Nope, they're still firing. So 
I think we're in a pretty good position to make a decent sized build around our furnaces. We are going to be able to conserve some of these bricks because, as you can see here, I left sort of a gap. And that's because I want to have some big, tall, or to say some narrow, but tall windows. I mean, this building is going to be hot. Granted, we are seraphs and we apparently have asbestos skin, so it won't matter to us. But to keep the sweat from our eyes and to keep the other workers that are totally living here nice and cool, I think we're going to have some nice big windows for maximum airflow. And that will cut down somewhat on the number of bricks we'll need. For the door here, I think I might just want to have sort of an open warehouse door. I might chisel something where we have like a pretend door sticking out here that's open all the time. And I think we'll just sort of deal with drifters by having a fence around the place like we discussed and having a gate right here leading in or right right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build out one section of this wall sort of the way that I envisioned it and then we'll talk about what needs to happen in order to finish it. Here we have one section of wall complete, and this is a sample of what I would like this building to look most of the way around. I think what we'll do is we'll have a peaked roof that meets in the middle here, and we'll have similar windows on this side, but I may end up extending them upward, maybe even moving the whole window up to sort of center it between the base and the peak of the roof. Now the roof is going to be, I think, a somewhat different style. I've seen some styles where the wall comes the whole way up to meet the roof and there's sort of a like a brick trim on the top of the wall. And I'm going to try that and probably continue using the bauxite for that. And then we'll have a roof of basalt, probably cobblestone, that will go the whole way to the top. But in order to do that, I could probably finish out this little column here, couldn't I? There we go, that looks a little bit better. So in order to finish this off though, we are going to need some more phyllite, and we have that right below our base. We're also going to need some more basalt because I used pretty much all of the basalt stones we have making, where are they, here we go, these dry stone fences. Now we don't need more than probably a stack and a half to two more stacks of this, but we'll also need some for the roof because you use the same kind of stones to make the dry stone fence as you do cobble for the roof. I think we're going to be pretty good on the bricks because again we have over 500 of them and the set cooking over there is done so we are going to be well off on bricks. So I think what we need to do is we need to go and get some basalt stones and some phyllite blocks. We've got some digging to do. Let's get to it.
Okay, everyone, we are back. I have been out to mine things, and I have come armed with, I think, everything we need to build the exterior of the structure, except for the smokestacks, and we'll come back to those. So, with that being said, let's get to work. So there is the base to our build, and we'll come back in with the chisel here, and we'll just chisel a couple of these out. Maybe we'll just align all of their textures, after all. And then we'll come in with these pillars here. And I realized I made these one block too short, so we're going to fix that here. And then we're going to come in with our brick walls. And we have stack and a half with us at the moment, and I think there should be a little bit more finishing firing, and I will replenish from our stocks initially created for bloomeries as needed. Alright, and with that in place, let's go ahead and let's finish out the front windows and the rear windows. And then, before we figure out these windows, because I kind of want to have maybe these two in the center raise up a couple blocks, just to sort of follow the roof line, or maybe even only halfway follow it, we will get the roof line in place first, and then we'll come in and we'll put these windows in, and maybe even raise these up a little bit. And there she is. There is our basic roof line. I went with the 1 to 2 slope, so it's a, what, 22 and a half degree angle? And I think it looks kind of nice. Especially once we get the smokestacks in the back coming up, I think it'll look especially fine. Now what I want to do here is I want to bring these two center windows up, if I can get to land here. Let's see, so they have one, two, three blocks of space. Let's just move them up one block. That might just be 
enough of a bit of interest, or maybe even just, rather than raising the floor, we'll just raise the top of the windows up by one block each. And that might just give a bit of definition to the sides here. And I'm not sure how I'm going to cap off these right here. I might, I might run a stair along the outside of these blocks, but I'm not sure yet. I will have to think about that, because I didn't consider that beforehand. Whew. Okay. That was a job. That was a job. So I got both sides done, and I decided to go with just a single orange bauxite stair at the top of each of these sort of pylons or pillars of dry stone. And I think it works. I do want to cap off the very top of the roof there with some more bauxite and might even sort of expand it out a little bit over the edge. I did put some lanterns out so I can see what I'm doing and to help just keep drifters at bay. And we are getting toward the end of the cementation process, which is nice. Now, given how long I've been recording this episode, I think it might have been a bit ambitious to think we're going to get the inside also chiseled and decorated. I think what I want to do is let's focus on the outside. We will get the floor in. I want to keep it kind of simple. And then in the next episode, we'll come through and do an editing pass. Or if not next episode, then a later one. But we will want to come in here and just get some nice details in. Now, in the meantime, one detail I do want to get in place is I do want to put these smokestacks in. And let's get them in on top of our furnaces here. Come on. There we go. And I'm thinking what we can do is we'll use granite rock. And I want to go with granite rather than more brick because that texture and color is getting kind of tired. So what I think I want to do is we'll sort of pretend that these are maybe clad in metal or, I don't know, better heat dissipation or something. And we will just... Aha, uh -huh, okay. We will assume that that's what's happened. So I'm going to get these smokestacks in, and then we'll put the exterior smokestack bits on outside, on the roof. So I put a lantern up there to illuminate them and take a look at night, and I was immediately ambushed by a rift and these guys, and more of them. So I decided to just wait till morning. But I think, I think that's the perfect height for our smokestacks. And they do need some chisel work. I'm going to slim those down a bit. I want them to taper at the top a little bit. And then I think... I brought some shale rock, and I think what we're going to do is speckle the top as if there's like soot coming out and building up on the lip there, and so each of the top four blocks there will have some of the shale speckling on it.
I did eventually grow a brain. And I put it to use. Okay, and like that, the exterior of the building is... I'm gonna call it done. I think I like it. Do I like the sort of flat top here with a little bit sticking out? Oh boy, do I ever. Will I ever do it again? I'm not gonna say. But I am liking how this came out with the neat roof there, and if we get back to the road, we can see the smokestacks and their little speckling of soot and gunk on the outside. And I put a bit of flare on the outside, if you can see that there, because it was looking a bit plain without it. And you know, I did come into a floor. Um, I'm not wild about the andesite. I think it's kind of too mellow for everything else, so I might come and tear this out and put something a little grayer in or something. I wanted to have a different color than the granite, but it's just not working out. So we'll come back in and rip this out when we come in and do the interior of this building. But we're all here for steel making, so let's get to that. So the first thing to note is, of course, these broken blocks. And you can break them with a pickaxe or your hand, and you will get, I believe, between two and four bricks back. I got four for that one. This is still glowing. So you're not going to lose the entire block, but you're also not going to make it back. Now that was not true until recently. It used to be that you on average got four blocks back, so you could actually pretty much almost always repair them without any loss. But it is not quite so efficient anymore. So what we can do then is we can either go and make fresh brick blocks out of these bricks and some mortar, or since we already have a bunch of these made up, we'll just use them. And all we do is replace these guys. And done. And then you have this, the coffin. And you can just break it with your pickaxe and you'll get all the parts back. And inside, we now have whole bunch of what is called blister steel. Now we can't use this yet, we have to actually sort of work this into new ingots, but it is a much simpler process than making the iron blooms into iron ingots. So I'm going to go ahead and collect all of these ingots from here and repair all of the furnaces, and then we will head over to the forge. And here we are. We have our three stacks of 16 blister steel ingots. Let's go ahead and we will fire them up. I'm going to move the iron anvil over to our help hammer setup temporarily. Even though you don't really have to use a help hammer to smith these out into full ingots, but it is just simpler in my opinion, and saves on hammer durability. Here we go. You'll see these are much simpler. Oh, right. So you'll see these are much simpler. And done. So they're pretty quick. And now that we have 16 red hot ingots of steel, work them into tools and armor and weapons just like any other material. Let's give it a shot. Let's make our very first steel tool. I'm thinking a pickaxe. Grab our hammer and look at that nice shiny looking steel. Let's go ahead and hammer this out. There we go. Oh boy, does it feel good to have a steel pickaxe. It has been a while since I've held one of these. Now you'll notice that a steel pickaxe has 2,500 durability. Compare that to the iron pickaxe's 1,000, and you'll see that steel tools 
are generally about two and a half times more durable than their iron equivalents. So taking four of these is like taking ten of these. So these can be great for extended forays into unknown lands, or if you're going to make armor, it makes the strongest armor in the game. And that could be cool to have when we are adventuring down deep in the bowels of the world, because while iron armor is pretty good, and so is the Blackguard and the Forlorn Hope, it doesn't quite have the same protective power of steel. I am personally somewhat undecided on whether it's worth to go all steel for all your tools and everything, because there's a lot of work that goes into it, and each ingot of steel, after you've made the iron, takes something like another dozen pieces of fuel. So if you have a big fuel operation and you're very efficient at it, then I guess it can be a boon. But sometimes it might actually be better to stick with iron for certain things that you don't find yourself needing a ton of. Or if you just don't like making fuel and spending all that time making steel, stick with iron. I think for now I'm going to stockpile these steel ingots and make a few tools but I want to save them up for making the steel plate armor. And so, I guess in between episodes, while I have maybe enough... Actually, no, I have enough black cold fire, which I'm not thrilled about using, but I can use it. But yeah, I'm going to fire this up with some black coal because we are out of charcoal. Yep, we have a couple stacks over in the chest over yonder, but not enough to fire probably even one furnace the whole way through. This whole process ran kind of long, so I'm going to leave the exterior walls and the interior for another day. I'll probably hook up the road to it just so I can, you know, not jump across dirt and grass, but we will come back to the foundry in a later episode. Anyway, everyone, that is about all we have time for in this episode of Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed the end of this journey in steelmaking, and boy was it a long one. We have been at this for six months. This is actually our six month anniversary. That's a word, right? It is, right? But we finally have access to the most powerful tools in the game, and we shall fear no stone, we shall fear no drifter. They shall fear us. As spring starts to roll in, look forward to additional upgrades and improvements and new builds around Lupine Ridge. If you have a question you'd like me to answer AMA style in a video, drop it in the comments with the hashtag 20 questions. And if you play computer games and want to support the channel, consider using my partner link next time you're shopping on the Humble Store, on screen now and in the description below. Anyway, as always, my name has been Corazar, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.